Hi, and welcome to the second in my video series on running an Appster Lab in Eve NG. In my first video, I talked a bit about the topology that I'll be deploying with you and some of the things that I will cover and some of the things I won't cover. Like, I'm not going to walk through installing an Eve NG server but I'll certainly show you how to deploy Appstra in EVNG. If you're not quite sure if this series is going to cover the topics you want, I would go watch that video first and then come back and see me here, and we'll start talking about the requirements for the EVNG server to run the topology as I have it laid out. I'll also talk a little bit about what you can modify within that topology if you don't have the same type of resources that my server has. And finally, I'm going to talk about two things that I've run into a few times with virtualized QFX in EVNG and how I deal with those issues when they come up. Let's begin. So first off, we're going to talk about the server that I'm running. It's a Dell R620. It's ancient. I think I got the chassis for free and I've over time added more resources to it. Right now I've got 32 cores, they're Xeon Prox, I've got 94 gig of memory and three terabits worth of disk, which is hilarious because it's actually a combination of spinning disk and SSD in an LVM, which is a big no-no, but it, for what I'm doing, it seems to work just fine. When the lab is up and running, it uses about 24 cores, 47 gig of memory, and about 400 gig of disk. Now these values are the averages of these percentages uh, I didn't really take the swap into consideration, uh, but I averaged that out and then I added 10% to come up with these numbers. So if you build your lab the same way I've got mine designed, then you're probably going to be okay. If you don't have the same resources that I have, you can reduce your lab. These firewalls are here for service chaining, which is a topic I may or may not even cover, but certainly if those come out, your resource requirements are going to go down. I have a number of VSRXs down here acting as hosts. That's just because, and you know this if you watched the first video, I absolutely hate doing LACP on Linux in a hypervisor. It's just so painful. So these VSRXs that you see here at the bottom of the screen are literally just there to be LACP termination points. Right now, I'm using them as the host that I'm testing from and to uh, make sure the fabric's behaving the way I want it to. Uh, if, you, if you're a wizard and you can get LACP working in EVE here in this environment, use that because it's gonna use less resources than the VSRX. And you know, if you're really limited, you only really need to one, run one fabric if you just wanna play with uh, Abstra. Uh, each of these collections on either side of the screen here of devices is a data center. Uh, the Astro managed portions are going to be these VQFXs in the middle comprised of a leaf spine and border leaf on both sides. I've got DCI up here but everything that isn't in this inner box is not managed by Abstra and that's the area you can play around with for resources. Now as I mentioned I've got VQFX, I mentioned VSRX, I actually also have VMX up here acting as my DCI routers. Like I said, these exist outside of the fabric. The versions of code that I'm running, kind of specific to me, uh, you can see that I've got um, this version of VQFX. Funny story, uh, and let me tell you a little bit about VQFX first. Uh, this is actually a great virtualization tool for you to use in EVE because VQFX is a perpetual beta. We don't sell a production version of it. We don't license it. You can go to Juniper's website. You can just Google Juniper VQFX. You're going to eventually end up at the page that you see here. And when you get here, you click on download your trial and you'll be brought to a download screen and you can download it. Now, I think you have to be logged in. The workflows that I see are a little bit different than non-Juniper employees, but you can get here without spending any money. You'll also notice that the current downloadable version is actually not the version that I'm running. <laughs> it's because Juniper employees, I guess, were a little special sometimes. Just run this version, and if that doesn't work, I'll talk about that in this what you should run section. If you can get your hands on VMX, great. Here's what I'm running in my lab in VSRX. Like I said before, these aren't managed by the fabric, these resources that aren't you know, VQFXs. So they can be anything as long as they meet the requirements of the role they're in, right? These routers here just need to be routers. They can do BGP. They're going to be there for the DCI. 
uh, you, know, you can get creative if you've got Cisco images or something else. I mean, you could use FFR here if you want, uh, pardon me, FRR here if you wanted to. And then I say Ubuntu Mate down here, it really doesn't matter. Ubuntu Mate is my Pico Linux version of choice when it comes to building these lab topologies. Uh, but like I said, I hate doing LAC P in Linux, so you know I'm not using it here, but that is the go-to that I use. Use whatever flavor you're most comfortable with. Now, in terms of what you should run, if the current version of EQFX doesn't work for you, this is the REPFA combination that I've had the most luck with. And when I say luck, I mean stable. VQFX is kind of notorious for coming online and the RE comes up fine and the PFE does not. It just says offline. And what it should say is online. Go figure. This combination, even though they're different versions, uh, has worked solidly for me in EVE. That and the 20.3 version I'm running right now. So if you have problems with the uh, current most recent you know, downloadable version, you can try 18.4R1, 18.4R2. They should still work fine if they don't leave me a comment, but I'm pretty sure that the features that AppStore uses are included in those versions of code. Like I said, you know, these are the current versions for VMX and VSRX, but I say, or oh, whatever, really. And that's just, again, since they're not managed by the fabric, there aren't any special considerations. They just need to route. And the only reason I'm using VSRX down here at all and even here for my WAN simulation is because it uses less resources than the VMX and the VQFX. That is literally it. Obviously I'm using it here because I've got firewall clusters I'm simulating, but um, you know, everywhere else you can just be creative with what you're using if you have uh, some resource constraint considerations. I do have a note here about the terminal. It has to do with how Eve likes to open things. This is kind of a nit for me. I mean, I don't really need to talk about this, but. I prefer using the native terminal whenever possible. Uh, native console, pardon me. This is, that's what you're gonna see during this lab. I've never used the HTML5 desktop. I think it's an abstraction layer that makes no sense. Uh, but HTML5 console, if you were to use that, when you go into the Eve lab and you click on a device, it will bring up an HTML5 console that's embedded within the window. And if you've got multiple consoles open at the same time and they kind of get stacked up and it becomes a bit of a nightmare to manage what's where. As long as you've got that native console uh, selected, you're going to be able to click on these devices and log into them using Secure CRT. So I can click on this and you can see Secure CRT comes up, hit enter, enter, enter. I'm in. Great. Awesome. Now there's a few nits, uh, things that you should know about VQFX in particular. Uh, the first is something I experienced not for the first time, but recently, for maybe the third time, uh, when I lost power at my house and everything was still turned on. There is a high likelihood, and it's not 100%, but there's a high likelihood if your VQFX that's turned on and running loses power, that when it comes back up, it's going to be in this weird state where it's not going to say it's the master. And what I mean by that is any of these devices that support VC, they're going to say master and zero if they're not in a VC. Now, if they were in a VC, then master would reflect the role that they had in that virtual chassis. And this number would represent the FPC number, the slot, quote unquote, in the VC they are. All of these should be in a master colon zero state. But if they lose power, they might come up and say line card here and number one there. And this is some sort of split brain protection where it's like, I don't know what happened, so I'm just gonna be the line card and now you've gotta manually tell me that I'm in a VC of one, it's just me on my own device. Now the way that you do that is you use these commands. Uh, request virtual chassis reactivate will change this master back, uh, pardon me, the line card back to master. And then you have to renumber this one to a zero so that all of your interface configurations actually match the config. So the config's still intact, nothing will work, but as soon as you do those two things, everything should come back to square one. Now, something else that happens periodically is you'll have a link that isn't passing traffic. It's anomalous. There's no one thing that seems to cause it. But when it does happen, I have a workflow that I use that generally is about 95% effective at recovering traffic flow. Let's say that between these two devices, this link isn't passing traffic. So the first thing I would do is I would verify that. And you can, best way is to own the professional version of EVNG and use the capture feature. And it is plain as day when traffic is not passing. Usually it's not passing in one direction. You'll see you know, control traffic, 
going in one way, you won't see it going the other, you'll run a ping, you'll see the ping go out, you won't see it come in the other side, or you won't see the response. It's, it's pretty clear when this is happening. So what you'll do is you'll shut down all four of these nodes, which represent two VQFXs, because like the VMX, these come in with a forwarding plane and a routing engine. So once these are turned off, you'll want to wipe that forwarding plane. If you right click any node that isn't online, you'll get this option that says wipe. Now wiping will blank a config, so don't do this to the RE, just do it to the FPC. And if it doesn't have an FPC, like it's VSRX, whatever, skip that part. Then delete this link, and then fix the permissions on the Eve server. And I'm not gonna walk you through that, but if you've done anything with Eve, you'll know what I mean when I say fix permissions because it's a command you literally have to run anytime you do anything in the CLI. So do that fix permissions command, then come back in here into your lab, recreate the link, and then start the nodes back up. And nine times out of 10, that fixes the problem for me. If it doesn't, usually switching the interfaces that are being used between the links works. And then if push comes to shove, delete the nodes, do the fixed permissions thing again, come back in here, recreate the nodes. That's worked every time for me. Somebody already asked me in my first video for a lab template file, which I'm happy to provide. I'll put a link in the comments below. Maybe not right away when I publish this, but I'll get one uploaded. It's really easy for me to create that. Uh, you just go log out, you know, close the lab, and then find it again. And then you can click this button here for export. All this does is export the topology of the lab. It doesn't include the images, it doesn't include any configurations. So you'll still have to have those elements in order to bring the lab online. But it can save you a heck of a lot of time. Uh, obviously you wouldn't have to build all the links, build all the nodes, write down all this text. But it also isn't like, a, oh, I just spun up the lab that you built either. Uh, you're still gonna have to make sure that you've got the images. And if you don't have the images, you're gonna have to change some of these devices before you bring the nodes online or else they're just not gonna come online. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for sticking around. The next video, I'm gonna clear out this entire workspace. So this will be a blank page. We'll start defining things like the logins we're gonna use and we'll build the Appstra server. And from there, we're gonna start building out the topology and building our blueprints. And it'll be fun, it'll be really fun. Thanks again for sticking around. I hope to see you in the next video.